final conference uh, session of the New Horizon Final Conference. Uh, the session, uh, as you may know, is called uh, Engaging Stakeholders in Research Practice, uh, the How and Why of Co-Creation. Uh, and we're very uh, excited to, to have you all here. Uh, some people are still entering uh, the room. Uh, I think we're already at 47 participants now. Um, and as you can see, uh, we also have quite the list of uh, uh, speakers and hosts. Uh, we will uh, tell a bit uh, more about uh, the speakers uh, in a minute, but allow me just uh, to introduce the, the hosts of the session. Uh, Ulrike Wunderle of the uh, German Federation of Scientists, uh, Marlene Winter Christensen uh, of the Aarhus University in Denmark, uh, Shana Steck uh, from IHS in Vienna, uh, and Anne Luber and myself from uh, the University of Amsterdam. Uh, we have all been involved uh, with the New Horizon project and uh, particularly share an interest, uh, collected interest in uh, stakeholder and public engagement. Uh, so that's where we're really excited to have you at the session. Um, and then one of the questions which you might have is why co-creation and stakeholder engagement? Why is it so uh, of interest to people working on RI? Um, because it really is of interest to people working in RI, as you can see. Uh, this is a screenshot from a session yesterday, the introduction session uh, from our conference. Uh, and then people were asked to fill in a, a word cloud uh, and ask the question, uh, when you think about RI, what is important to you? Uh, and as you can see, engagement, inclusion, public engagement, diversity, uh, citizens are really at the center of uh, RRI for uh, a lot of the participants uh, of our conference session. I uh, completely recognize that. So that's just as uh, an intro, I think, to, to uh, uh, underscore the importance of what we're uh, doing here today. Uh, so what do we have for uh, as a program for today? Um, first, uh, the introduction, uh, which we're doing now. Uh, then uh, Bjorn Bedstedt from the uh, Danish Board of Technology uh, will share some uh, intel on why public engagement in research is actually necessary and interesting to conduct in the first place. Um, uh, and he will share some arguments that were developed uh, in the context uh, of one of the pilot actions uh, of the New Horizon project. Um, after this uh, plenary uh, presentation, uh, you will actually have some time to also engage in practice uh, with some stakeholder engagement tools uh, and co-creation tools, uh, because we came up uh, with a selection of breakout uh, uh, room formats. Um, and there we have the involvement uh, of a list of other speakers. Uh, the first session is a training on stakeholder engagement by uh, Jill Jaeger, who is an independent scholar based in Austria, and has been working uh, on stakeholder engagement uh, for quite some time. Uh, the second breakout possibility is the Knowledge Kiosk, uh, a new and innovative tool uh, developed by a group of people uh, in the Marie Curie Social Lab. Jonas Krebs from CRG, uh, Cristina Luis from the University of Lisbon, Blanca Guache from uh, Science for Change in Spain, uh, and Anna Olsen from IBMC uh, Porto. Um, as a third option, uh, we have the Tips and Tricks for RI card game, uh, which has been developed uh, in the context of another social lab uh, by Ines Vaitinen uh, from the European Network of Living Labs. And finally, there's the option uh, to experiment with the QuadroLog, uh, which has uh, been developed by uh, Eli uh, Lewis uh, uh, from the University uh, in the south of Israel. Uh, and after having uh, the possibility uh, to experience with these kinds of tools, uh, we will finally have a plenary wrap-up session, uh, which we will come back and share some lessons learned. So that's the program for today. Uh, but maybe first to get a bit more of a sense of uh, who we're working with here. Um, we came up with the ID uh, of a Mentimeter. Uh, so I think right now in the chat, someone is sharing a link for you um, to fill on, out some questions, to answer some questions, um, or alternatively, you go, can go to menti.com uh, and use the code. Let's see. I'll stop sharing my screen if the link is there. And so I will start sharing the Mentimeter. Okay. Can we see it? Yeah. Oh. 
Okay, people are already responding. So what? So the first question is to what extent are you familiar with public engagement? And interesting to see that seven, nine out of 17 participants, and we're still counting, are moderately familiar with public engagement. One person is not familiar at all. And a few are slightly or somewhat familiar. Uh, Ranking up those numbers too. And let's see, we now have 29 votes in, 58 participants. So let's just wait a few seconds more. Yeah. So that's interesting to see that the results are somewhat skewed to the right but quite some people moderately familiar with public engagement. I think the nice thing still is that we have uh, the development of some new innovative tools. So even for people uh, moderately familiar with public engagement, uh, there's something interesting to be gotten from this session. And otherwise they might obviously enlighten those people who are not familiar with public engagement. Let's see. Maybe we shall move on to the next bit. Okay. Here we go. And what stakeholder group do you represent? That was the other question that we asked and that everyone got the chance to fill in. Maybe just wait for a few more results there. So that's interesting um, in itself, right? That a lot of people present are researchers or educators or would rate themselves as such. Two people from the business world, two policymakers, and five people representing the NGOs and CSOs. And then there's one non affiliated citizen. Um, and this, I think, compares well, or yeah, compares well to what we uh, observe in the previous session uh, this morning, uh, and I think yesterday too, that uh, a lot of people who attend these meetings are in themselves affiliated uh, to research and education. So that's also something to keep in the back of our mind. Well, uh, we're going to uh, listen to the story uh, by Björn uh, Bedstedt. So I would like to uh, give you the floor, Björn, to share a bit more uh, also with this audience in the back of your mind about the whys of public engagement is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just share my screen. I'll try to be brief so there's time for all the interactive work which is always the most interesting. Um, I'm first going to say a little bit about the rationale behind public engagement in research in general. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about the pilot action in Horizon 2020 uh, or in New Horizon. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some definitions uh, and then about choice of method. Uh, first, there's a bunch of, of very generic arguments for why uh, one should do public engagement. It provides democratic legitimacy, it builds trust, it introduces public values in a, in a discussion. It leads to more innovative solutions, is uh, the claim. Um, and it also uh, uh, provides better anticipation. Uh, and finally, uh, public acceptance and ownership. These are some arguments. There are others, and, they are, uh, and others might phrase them uh, differently. Uh, in the context of uh, the New Horizon uh, project, I was involved with uh, Ulrike uh, in a pilot action and a couple of people more, uh, Till and Katarina. And, and we looked uh, specifically at public engagement in uh, Societal Challenge 5, 
which was uh, climate and environment in, in, in Horizon 2020 and, and, and is now spread over a couple of clusters in Horizon Europe. But we wanted to, to, to look at specifically why public engagement in those kinds of uh, research and innovation uh, processes. Uh, I'm not going to go through the whole text here, but the concern, general concern is that, you know, the, the more busy we get in, uh, in uh, forging a, a sustainable transition, a transition to a more sustainable society, uh, the, the more uh, often you hear calls for strong actions. Uh, hard policy choices, top-down choices, and um, and we argue against that and say that if citizens and stakeholders are not part of developing the social and technological innovations and solutions, it will become difficult to bridge the gap between those wishing to move faster and those thinking they're already being pushed too far. So this is an attempt to change some generic arguments into some more specific ones uh, for a specific uh, research and innovation area. Um, a few definitions. Um, I mean, RTD research has uh, 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 traditionally distinguished between two kinds of public engagement. One is stakeholder participation or stakeholder engagement, and the other is citizen participation. And they're not the same. So stakeholders are anyone with a stake in decisions to be made. They're organized groups with their vested interests. Citizens are lay citizens, and civil society is something else. It is not citizens. So this has some methodological implications, namely that you will not use ordinarily the same kind of methods for stakeholder and citizen participation. And having ticked off a stakeholder participation process doesn't necessarily mean, uh, or it doesn't mean that you have done citizen participation. So you have to be aware of that. Um, another kind of definition about uh, public engagement is that it is uh, it is not representative democracy. Uh, in the context of research, you could say that the researchers are the elected representatives who are going to make the research. Uh, so what is public engagement? It's not direct democracy either, because they don't decide, uh, stakeholders and citizens, what researchers should do but it's rather in the area of deliberative and participatory democracy, meaning that involving stakeholders or citizens in a research and innovation process is a kind of teamwork where you delegate uh, decision power to either citizens and stakeholders. So you have to be very precise about finding out what kind, uh, what room of influence are you willing to give up to citizens and stakeholders. Again, uh, another way of looking at this, hang on, yeah. Uh, another way of looking at public engagement uh, is looking at it as an intervention in a policy making, or in this case, a research and innovation process, all the way from agenda setting to implementation. And here again, uh, you will not normally use the same methods. So uh, method awareness also has to do with knowing which kind of process, uh, uh, when in a research and innovation process, you want to allow citizens and stakeholders to intervene. Uh, and here's an overview of different uh, citizen participation methods that would fit these different stages in uh, uh, in uh, a, a policy making or RNI process. Um, here's another way of looking at it. I mean, here you have the same uh, scale below from agenda setting uh, at the bottom from agenda setting to implementation. 
but on on the uh, on the vertical axis you you then have from local uh, over national to a European level. Here again, I mean, you are uh, most uh, likely to be using different kinds of method depending on what governance level uh, you're operating on. Uh, finally, um, uh, jumping back to both stakeholder and uh, citizen participation, uh, I can recommend to uh, take a look at uh, uh, the action catalog, uh, which is part of the engage, uh, which was developed under the engage 2020 project, uh, horizon 2020 project. Um, I think I can just show it quickly. Um, it's in here, and. Um, and, and, and here you can see uh, uh, a whole bunch of method. I think there's 50, uh, 50 60 uh, something. For example, if you want to uh, involve citizens, certain methods light up over others. Uh, if you want to involve industry, you know, there might be other methods you want to use. Maybe you want uh, dialogue, maybe you want uh, direct decision. Maybe you want local, uh, and and all these uh, scales uh, can. I mean, it, it it's it's not overly accurate. I mean, it, it's not a one hundred percent match, but at least it gives you an indication of what kind of methods you might want to look into. Um, and I think that's all I wanted to say. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, I think I'll join the workshop on stakeholder engagement. Thank you uh, very much, Bjorn, for this for very uh, enlightening presentation uh, and some tough issues uh, addressed in an interesting way. I think especially this differentiation between citizen participation and stakeholder participation uh, is interesting. And it's nice to see so many tools uh, easily available also. Um, let me just share my screen again. Let's see. Okay, can everyone see it all right? Yes, perfect. Um, speaking of tools, uh, we have quite some uh, on offer uh, here as well uh, from uh, the New Horizon project developed uh, by the people uh, I just mentioned. Um, and Right now, we would like to uh, move on to the more interactive uh, part of this session. Um, and we thought it would be interesting if you uh, choose one breakout session for yourself. Um, uh, and you can do that by adding a number before your Zoom name, but maybe first uh, read the descriptions here of the different sessions to kind of get a bit more of a glimpse and feeling of what you can expect. Um, and I can read it up, but I think you can all read it for yourself. Uh, let me just also explain how you select for yourself one of these uh, uh, different breakout rooms. Uh, if you hover below with your mouse, uh, if you're on the computer, you can click on participants. You can hover the cursor over your name like this, then click on more and rename. Then you can put a one, two, three, or four before your name like this. Uh, so just read it for yourself and then we'll make a decision and then we'll make sure that we come up with the right breakout room for you. Uh, it would be interesting uh, to also learn uh, from the other sessions. Uh, I think uh, I had a lot of fun uh, at the Quadro Log, uh, but I'm also very curious to hear what happened at the, the other sessions. Um, is everyone back already, Helmut? We set to do that? Yes, I mean, we lost some people on the way, but uh, we are still left with uh, 48 people. So I think that's still a nice number to wrap up. So. Good, perfect. We lost someone along the way in the dark web, but <laughs> other than that, most of us are still here. Um, yeah, so maybe uh, Ulrike, uh, can you uh, report a bit on uh, what you learned uh, training on stakeholder engagement or report on the experiences? And also if you came to it, uh, uh, whether or not you had some discussions on the barriers to implement this tool. Training. 
you're on mute, I think. Let's see. Uh, thank you very much, Joshua. Um, and thank you very much to the group for uh, this discussion and uh, jumping into this uh, short but uh, productive session uh, we had uh, together with Jill. Uh, Jill Jäger was the uh, expert on stakeholder uh, integration on our um, pilot action uh, training for stakeholder integration in our um, social lab. And, um, we uh, first tried to find out who are the participants in our uh, group and we saw that it well represented in, in a small format what uh, is in, uh, in the whole group here. So there were mainly uh, researchers and of course we were happy to transport our message uh, to them to see what they think about the modules um, we, we tested in, in the pilot action. Uh, so uh, we, uh, Jill gave an introduction um, of what we did and uh, presented uh, first um, what the workshop uh, started with um, and, and an introduction what uh, stakeholder uh, engagement and stakeholder inclusion and in research processes is for. This is mainly shortened because it, it related to what uh, Björn said in the introduction. And then um, we, uh, we focused on some explanatory issues on the different uh, steps of stakeholder uh, inclusion and finally went to the mental part using the case study used in the uh, workshop, in the training workshop, uh, which was about uh, a community which wanted to change uh, the, the infrastructure and build a medium-sized uh, municipality, sorry, um, uh, and a, 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 a shopping center in, in, in the town. And so we thought, we asked who would be the stakeholder you would like to include uh, the in environmentalist uh, stakeholders and those from business, uh, from, from the town um, and also uh, citizens to artists and creatives were uh, named as stakeholders to be included in the process to discuss uh, this, uh, the case study. And uh, we, we tried together to um, frame their issue they would name and finally we we, we thought about methods which we would uh, like to uh, apply in action research and uh, we got some uh, discussion on would citizen panels work uh, stakeholder mapping exercises co-creative workshop and and other um, aspects and finally uh, well we had a bit restricted time to really get into detail on that which was uh, a pity and we would probably have uh, other chances to to do this more uh, precisely we then asked um what uh, you liked about it and uh, about the exercise and uh, the answer was mainly that uh, the experience is that always an involvement of a stakeholders would make um come to a better result. Um, we saw that the main challenge for multi-stakeholder processes is a time pressure and to find the stakeholders. And one solution which I really liked very much uh, was uh, the aspect that it is really about building up a close relation and a base uh, of stakeholders for different aspects you want to focus on and to treat in a certain project or a certain research question and uh, to keep these engaged in the main issue of this long um, link to different stakeholder groups uh, is that it might be rewarding for all that participate in. Um, actually, we had one final question I would like to touch upon, which is we asked what would be your major concern and what we asked what would be your major um, interest in stakeholder engagement. It, uh, I just have to say that we asked uh, different questions about uh, is it difficult to get funding or should university teachers be those who get the uh, skills for um, stakeholder engagement first by training 
or is training needed mainly for funders or proposal evaluators or trainings needed for project coordinators or train the trainer projects and probably for training is the most important so we get dots on every of those questions there was no priority but as i uh, interpret this is that all of these groups need uh, training and um, this so, is what i got out uh, in thanks. time. yeah thank you very much uh, uh, for this uh, elaborate overview of what you did, uh, but also uh, very insightful, I think. Uh, uh, so there's a lot of work still to do uh, in, in terms of stakeholder training. And that's also something I get out of it. Uh, thank you very much for this. Um, then I would like to move on to Anne, who was present at the Knowledge Kiosk. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, we were in the kiosk session which was mm -hmm. run by Christina Lewis and Johan Skrep, uh, Krep, sorry, and Anna Olsen and uh, Blanca Gwaes. And we started off with doing a mirror board um, exercise, which was asking us participants to share our experiences with uh, challenges and opportunities for citizen engagement or stakeholder engagement. And the interesting thing was, if I answered correctly, that what we were asked to do was actually also an example of the topic that was being explained to us, which is the knowledge knowledge uh, kiosk. And interestingly, I learned that the knowledge kiosk is developed as a tool uh, via the same open dialogue method as, as it contains. So it's a product of its own process. And what is a key um, asset of this approach, this knowledge kiosk as a tool, is that it is a way to really move away from the knowledge deficiency model to a, a dialogue model. And because it allows citizens to speak without, and this is my wording, but this is how I understood it, without scientists first creating a dominant framing of what is being discussed. Uh, which was was really interesting to learn, um, and I well we the, of course in the first exercise then people we who we were present were sharing challenges and opportunities and one of the questions was how does the knowledge kiosk as a tool help to resolve uh, challenges or to uh, use opportunities and interestingly there was some for instance time constraints which is often an issue with um citizen engagement um the experience was that the knowledge kiosk was really helpful in limiting the time uh and yet being very effective and fruitful and what was appreciated also from what I learned by the chat from, from others is that it is very broadly applicable. It can be used for any topic addressed in research. Um, and that's it in that it's this openness to, 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 to bring on board citizens' perspectives. It's design thinking orientation. And somebody commented like, it is really so simple that that person was surprised it's not done more often and now there is this format. I want to add two things that um, there is a manual for the knowledge kiosk available. So if one is interested, it's, it's, it's available. And one question that is not yet answered, which also came up in the chat, which was also shared by the mirror board, is how do you recruit the non-scientist participants. So the citizens that Bjorn talked about when he made the distinction between stakeholders on the one hand and citizens on the other, that stakeholders were like Bjorn's word, vested, you know, interests organized, but how to reach out to the non-organized citizen? How would citizens know about this kiosk taking place in the first place? So that is still a question, if I am correct, also for the knowledge kiosk people, mm -hmm. which I would like to bring from our session to the plenary. Thank you very much uh, for the overview. And uh, indeed, moving from this knowledge uh, uh, deficiency model to an actual dialogue model in the design of an interaction format is really something uh, that sets this kiosk apart. Uh, and uh, would be nice. Thanks for that. Um, Malena. 
I think you're up next, right? Yes, thank you. How did it go? Uh, well, first I'll say thank you to Ines for, for giving us a taste of, of uh, these uh, tips and tricks for responsible research and innovation. Uh, they are sort of uh, thought provoking cards to start a, a discussion. And uh, they are cards on, on the different keys of RRI, but obviously uh, <laughs> the, the cards on public engagement was, uh, was the most discussed in, in this session. Um, where we discussed that uh, obviously uh, doing public engagement for researchers is uh, time consuming and it takes courage to actually get uh, into dialogue with citizens or stakeholders and actually incorporate their feedback and their input. Um, and it also requires a lot of expertise, uh, not just knowing about RRI, but actually uh, knowing how to engage people and having the tools and the expertise to do this. Uh, so some, maybe some of the other tools here are <laughs> useful. Um, and then that if you really truly want to have a dialogue uh, with people, you have to incorporate it from the very beginning of projects and it has to be uh, part of the whole uh, process. Um, and uh, people found that these uh, tips and tricks for RRI, this card deck, was uh, good for starting a dialogue, actually, and for um, perhaps having the internal discussion in a research group about uh, their values and about how to, to incorporate RRI in their practices. Um, but of course, uh, an open question is, uh, how do you overcome some of these, uh, these barriers to public engagement, like the fact that it needs tools and expertise, that it's time consuming and so on. So that's of course still an open question um, from, from the session. I think that was a very quick overview. Thank you very much uh, for the very quick uh, overview, also looking at the time indeed. Uh, and thanks uh, for sharing that. I think there's already a link indeed uh, in the chat uh, for the uh, tips and tricks for our iCard. Um, there is already a link to the to the card, but there is a question to the manual that Anne was uh, mm -hmm. presenting. Whether Anne Lobe could uh, share the link uh, to the manual? I would I would love to pass on that question to those who own the knowledge kiosk um, design. So the four people here, um, and uh, Jonas or Blanca, would you respond? Yes, so we have not published it yet, so it's not, uh, you cannot find it on, on a website. For the moment, I think the easiest is if you get in touch with us personally, so you will get our contact details and we are happy to share it, but yeah. it's still not publicly available, the menu. Or maybe that short, the answer. I will also share the contact details um, right now, but maybe first also as a rapporteur, Shauna, can you quickly share a bit about the session that we have yes um so i can be very brief because we were actually uh playing the quadrilog game as the session ended so we didn't have much time for discussion but um i can speak for myself as someone who was in the role-playing seat of the community member we also had a there's four role-playing seats of community member researcher administrator and uh student and um it was facilitated by Ellie, who created the Quadrilogue. And um, it's, it was really interesting to see how the roles um, came to life. We were role playing, but of course, um, this Quadrilogue is also used in real life settings. And I will invite Ellie to quickly say something about um, what it what it's been like implementing the Quadrilogue in real life yeah. context. So um... Yeah, so I I'm, I'm listened to, to the summaries of the first three projects and I took some notes uh, because this also shares a lot of the challenges with others, like recruiting community that are not part of uh, an organization uh, and even recruiting researchers and even convincing them that it's worth uh, the effort. And I can just say that we start from small, we start um, like community people, we engage first with um, uh, the active members of community, 
slowly, and then the word goes around and we, we actually bring, they bring in more. And researchers, you know, there's always the talkative ones, so you put them in first, but then they start bringing in the other researchers, which it's, it's interesting because the quiet ones suddenly get a stage. And people are, are very, um, the researchers that are usually quiet get a lot of uh, confidence. Uh, we had one researcher, for example, from basic sciences, very, very, very basic. And the community person told them, you know, but uh, all of the science is based on what you do. And, and he went around like with this, you know, a really proud chest and so it's it's a uh, very revealing but we always have to start with uh, those who participate who, who are very uh, active it's a culture change so it's not that straightforward thank you very much uh, for also relaying this and uh, i also had the joy of experiencing a bit uh, role play with the quadro look i really enjoyed uh, playing a student again as i mentioned um I think uh, as a final uh, uh, token uh, for everyone, uh, apart from obviously thanking all our uh, speakers uh, and hosts for organizing this, uh, and also thanking uh, the technical support, uh, Helmut and uh, Marie, uh, for all their great support here. We'd just like to uh, share the, the contact details uh, of everyone who was involved. Uh, if you have further inquiries um, about uh, particular tools that you uh, found interesting, uh, in which we really uh, whet your appetite. Um, I'd also like to uh, point out that we have an RI Ambassadors uh, Global Network page on LinkedIn, uh, which you can uh, uh, subscribe to uh, and exchange further on this topic. Um, if there uh, are any other further questions right now, uh, you might uh, also uh, just reach out to me in email and uh, i'll also be lingering on after the session uh, to answer any further inquiries um, we also came up with a digital gift bag um, i think it's not working right now to share it but what we might alternatively do is to put it on the linkedin group um, if that's uh, okay with everyone um, so yeah i really uh, like to uh, invite you to stay on a bit longer if you have further questions. Uh, and if you haven't, uh, I would really uh, love to thank you and uh, especially the speakers uh, for the wonderful uh, contribution of today. Uh, and I hope to see you uh, again uh, tomorrow at the uh, other sessions of the New Horizon Final Conference. There's one on uh, sustainability transitions and there's one in which we're actually showcasing the RI experience uh, with access to a lot of different uh, tools that were also discussed today. So uh, be sure to check in there and. Thanks for uh, attending the session. What's in the gift? What, what did we miss? It's, uh, it's, uh, in the gift bag, there's different uh, documents on the different tools and links uh, for contact details and online. So uh, okay. yeah, there's uh, really uh, interesting material there, but uh, I think we can put it on the LinkedIn group and upload it there. So there's an extra reason for people to visit the LinkedIn group. It's, a, it's the thought that counts, really. It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. All right. Thanks, everyone.